Fallout 76's incoming Wastelanders DLC update just had its early access private test server go live, where a handful of community members were selected to experience this early. We have quite a bit to talk about around this, who was selected, perhaps why they were selected, or even how you could be selected in the future. But also following this, there have been a variety of leaks to go along with Wastelanders, and I'll be touching on that and my content around those leaks going forward. We're really getting into the final stretch now. There's going to be a lot to talk about when it comes to Fallout 76 going forward. As such, I do encourage you guys to subscribe. A decent chunk of you that watch these videos are not currently subscribed, or you could like the video, which definitely does help with the YouTube algorithm. But with all that being said, let's first touch on the Wastelanders PTS. If you're not familiar, the Wastelanders PTS is basically a public test server where select community members can try out Wastelanders early, but also will be responsible for reporting bug fixes and providing feedback to Bethesda, so hopefully when Wastelanders actually releases, it'll be in a relatively bug-free state. They announced this a week and a half ago when applications were opened following that. It was meant to originally go live this past Friday, but it ended up getting delayed by Bethesda. They just described how they needed a little bit more time before they could start sending out invites, and I think this may have had something to do with the fact that it was a Friday, as it would be kind of weird to invite a few hundred people to this early access thing, but then not have anyone in office over the first few days they could experience it, in case anything did go horribly wrong. Well, either way, come this Monday, invites did go out. So if you were on PC and one of the lucky people to be chosen, you would receive the ability to download the Fallout 76 PTS in the Bethesda.net launcher, access to the PTS private forum on the official Bethesda forums, as well as an email saying you got in and with your NDA to sign. As yes, this entire thing is NDA'd. So if you're hoping for some official sources like me, other YouTubers, or the media to actually have full-on coverage of what's being presented here, well, we can't. The people participating are actually not allowed to talk about what's going on during the PTS at all even once the PTS ends. So it definitely seems like they stuck pretty true to that 100 or so player number, as not many players at all were added to this. Several people I thought were kind of sure things didn't get added. And for me, I definitely did apply, although I was not added to this. I'm not participating in the Wastelanders PTS, at least as of right now. But again, it's not a media thing. It's a genuine bug testing server. So it kind of makes sense that YouTubers weren't added, although I know of one that did manage to get in. Although don't fret, because also last week, Bethesda did clarify that they received such an overwhelming amount of interest that they may expand on the number of invitations in the future, depending on their testing needs. I've only heard more of this since that statement was made, that there may potentially be subsequent weeks of invites. Although I wouldn't be shocked if on this Thursday's Inside the Vault article, they address that a little bit further, as they would have several days of testing to get a better understanding if they need more players. So if you didn't get in just yet, there still is hope. Although just in general, it seems like they really did focus on the hardcore category of players. Users who have been actively playing the game or active in some other role in the community. Large in part, it didn't seem like it was just a random assortment, but very focused, which is good to see. So hopefully there are a lot of people actually playing and trying to break things, not just playing for their own enjoyment. But to go along with all of this, what likely comes at no surprise to anyone is there also have been a ton of leaks around Wastelanders. And I would say it's pretty safe to assume that this is only going to become more and more prevalent as time goes on. It seems like for those accepted into the PTS, there was roughly a 40 to 60 gigabyte download. As such, there's a good chunk of people that literally couldn't download the game yesterday even though they were accepted yesterday. And many only really got access today, and as such, we started to see quite a bit of information leak today. So now, something to keep in mind with this. I've seen a ton of Wastelanders leaks. Several of you have sent me links or even emails with information around this, which is fine. But one, be very wary. I would say roughly 80% of the stuff I saw thus far was totally fake. People are pretending they got into the PTS, providing little to no evidence, and creating fake but otherwise believable stories as to what's going on in this. Although, separate from that, there definitely has been a decent chunk of leaked information that is accurate and very true. Things that we didn't know beforehand, but I do know for a fact from more private sources that is a part of Wastelanders. The vast majority of this just being written text, whether it be typed out by one user or another, but even some screenshots have leaked. At this point, I haven't seen any videos, but I wouldn't be shocked if more is to come. Again, it's literally just the first day. Many people only just got access to this. So as time goes on, people get more and more comfortable with the private test server, I'm sure there definitely will be more. 
In large in part, as of right now, I found among private Discord communities, there is a lot being shared. Mostly people who got into the PTS sharing details with some of their friends, and some of their friends screenshot that and share it even further, and it's just getting passed around. The overwhelming majority of it seems to be fake thus far, but again, there are some true things out there. And I'm sure as time goes on, as more people play this, as more of these things are shared, certain major details will just become known among the community. Now I have to imagine and kind of assume Bethesda expected this. It's not the first time they've done a community invitational. We saw it with the Fallout 76 stress test before the beta even released. Xbox users were able to play the game early. There honestly wasn't a ton of leaks around that, although there were some and that also did have an NDA. But separately, we saw a ton of this with Fallout 4's DLC betas. Very similar to how we're getting an early access PTS for Wastelanders. For Fallout 4's DLC, Bethesda invited certain users to playtest that early in a beta. You had to sign up for this, then people were chosen at random, and the leaks for that were far, far worse, such that Far Harbor in its entirety was actually uploaded to Nexus mods early, so you could literally download the entire DLC and play it on your game. This both being an early access leak, but also the DLC for free. Far Harbor, I feel like, didn't have as many leaks as Nuka World, which had images and details shared just about everywhere. Back in the day, I shared some of those images in a video and ended up getting a copyright strike from ZeniMax. They're typically pretty strict about this stuff, so from that experience three years ago, I'm not going to be covering any of the DLC leaks around Wastelanders. One, because I think it is important to keep some of this stuff private, but two, I just don't want a copyright strike that is significant and a major hit to this channel. But rather, what I'll be doing is talking about leaks on a more high level. Like how now, just within these first 24 hours, we've already seen quite a bit of details leak. Whether that be people's initial impressions, some of the story details which characters are returning, but a ton in the way of new content, which armors, weapons, etc. are coming with this. It is a bit of an odd situation for me because I typically do cover some of this stuff early when things are data mined or even just speculation about the future. But with this kind of stuff, a few copyright strikes on my channel would be deleted. But even further, I do want to give Bethesda the opportunity to really showcase this themselves, to have that big trailer or gameplay drop that reveals these otherwise fairly major additions that are coming. I will still cover things Bethesda add to the files of the game themselves when new updates are shipped and we can data mine new details. But as far as people breaking NDAs, I will not be covering or linking to that. So that's just a disclaimer going forward. And separate from that, I'm sure most of you don't want some of this content spoiled. A lot of what I saw thus far is only a piece of the puzzle, a small glimpse at what the larger DLC is, and a lot of it is super misleading or just straight out lies. So though I'm sure many of you after watching this video will seek out some of these leaks, just keep in mind that much of it is pretty inaccurate, although I'm sure we'll only see more and more of this content get released and posted as the days do go on. I'm pretty curious to see what happens next in regards to the Wastelanders PTS and some of these leaks, as I feel like overall it's just not a super great situation. Let's say this PTS goes on for another two weeks, we'll probably see a lot more in the way of leaks as people keep their hands on this content. Even in just the time I was making this content, I saw a whole nother new leak pop up around this. And now you're going to have the scenario where fans that are very excited for this game, or even those that are cautiously optimistic, will slowly start getting details from these leaks. With Wastelanders right now, although we know some, we really don't know that much. We've seen some concept art and we've seen a few in-game locations, but we really haven't had much in the way of details in a long time. Mostly just getting minor locational details over the past few weeks. I was speculating Bethesda would have a fairly sizable information dump just before the PTS goes live, anticipating that, yeah, there would be some leaked details anyway, so they may as well take advantage of how that information is spread. Or maybe even some new gameplay from a few media outlets, so we could digest that, read into it, and also look at a lot of tertiary stuff you could find in the background of that gameplay. I have to assume they knew these leaks were coming. As I mentioned before, they've done stuff like this before and had much larger leaks, like with that Far Harbor leak. As time goes on, we'll see what kind of response we get from this, if we see significant action taken from them, if people start getting kicked out of the PTS, or what kind of consequences that could even hold for your Fallout 76 account in general. Although separate from that, some official details around Fallout 76's Wastelanders DLC were kind of revealed in an odd way, as just recently we did get the official ESRB rating for Wastelanders. Now this doesn't indicate a ton, it does confirm that it is pretty close to release, but we did kind of know that already. 
I was doing some research as to what constitutes a rating being complete, and it's not like the content itself has to all be complete, and technically the ESRB doesn't even have to play test things before submitting an official rating, it just needs to be described to them. But in this new rating that I will have linked down below on the ESRB website, we do get one or two interesting lines. They do describe how the game contains some suggestive materials in the dialogue. And then they actually give quotes of the dialogue, things we haven't heard before. I've got a button shaped bruise on my backside after that last ramp on the console. Nothing brings me down to earth like making love to you on the cold hard ground. So seemingly some new Wastelanders quotes that we hadn't seen before. Not a ton, but something else that I found to be pretty interesting. But all in all, that's a pretty good recap of where things stand right now with Fallout 76 and Bethesda. One that is very exciting, there definitely are some really cool and good looking details out there. And we're definitely now in that final stretch. Within the next two months, we will have our hands on Wastelanders. And I'm sure over the next few weeks, we'll only get increasing amounts of details both from Bethesda and from some of these leaks. Either way, with all that being said, I thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later.